the new retirement crisis. Yes, there's always a crisis in retirement planning. Cashing out your 401k. Oh, my lands. Oh, we're all going to go bankrupt. Uh, it's from financialplanning.com, and you can become, uh, you get three free articles. I used to, they used to send this to me for free. I guess they don't like me anymore, but uh, I, anyway, whatever. So you can, you know, sign up. I'll put a link in the show notes and uh, see what they got. Millions of Americans are paying billions of year each, uh, each year in taxes by cashing out their 401ks as they uh, change jobs. Getting immediate financial hit that sets them up for leaner times in retirement. See how they say that? See how they say that sets them up for leaner times in retirement? You don't know that. You don't know that to be true. You're saying that, but you don't know that to be true. You don't know if I cash out my 401k, I'll have leaner times in retirement. You can't. I mean, it's just it's horrible writing. Cashing out is an emergency front in the country's lack of financial readiness for work. See how again. They're saying there's a lack of financial readiness after work. They're, they're, they're stating these things as, as if it's fact. It's not fact. It's pure speculation. It's horrible writing. Amidst ro robust job hopping and the rise of the gig economy, the combination of tax bills now and slimmer nest eggs later is most frequently seen with millennials. Uh, the first financial hit comes with a one-time tax bill, but there's also 10% penalty. Yeah. Middle-aged workers are typically in their peak earning years, so they're already in the tax bracket higher than the one they usually face in retirement. You don't know that to be true. And by the way, uh, you don't, A, you don't know that to be true because a lot of times in, in retirement, if you have big IRA distributions, your taxes can be higher because it taxes your Social Security. On top of that, you don't know when these people cash out. Do they cash out in the year for which they're in the higher income tax bracket or do they cash out the next year? We don't know. Interesting, but they're just assuming this. I mean, it's all just negative stuff. And again, they might be right. We don't know. But I'm just saying it's all focused on the negativity. Meanwhile, departing employees expecting severance package can find that taxable 401k distributions can hurl them in the next tax bracket. Yeah, it can. 100%. I, 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 no issue there at all. The question is, when do you get the hit? Do you get the hit in a new tax year after you've already been severed? Or do you get the hit in the same tax year when you're making 150000 I don't know. Second hit comes from the losing out in the opportunity for the time to work its magic and compound the growth. Okay. The ramifications are a giant opportunity for financial planners to educate their clients. Uh, this guy says, once you blow out your 401k, you can't unwind this. What's known as a leakage of dollars from employer-sponsored retirement plans uh, can uh, amounts to about 60 to $105 billion a year, according to the Savings Preservation Working Group. So stupid. People cashing out some of all their accounts have different tax rates, tax rates, of course, but even assuming a low 12% tax rate, that's still 7.2 to 12.6 billion that savers uh, lose to taxes each year. Well, you're going to pay the taxes, even a 12% tax rate in the future. And it's, I mean, you're not getting around the taxes, which is my frustration with this because for, well, let's just keep reading. Withdrawals from 401ks are taxed no matter what. So savers end up paying Uncle Sammy the way. Exactly. The issue is that a one-time tax bill for cashing out means a big outlay up front and less money in future decades because there's nothing left to grow. Right. Leakage tends to take a back seat to, build, to the big wealth management question whether Americans are saving enough for their golden years. Nearly 47% or half of Americans, according to a McKinsey study. Yeah, McKinsey, you freaking scumbags. You know, if it's McKinsey's on it, you know it's bad. It's kind of like if the Rockefellers touch it, you know it's bad. McKinsey sucks, dude. While the industry has made great strides in helping more Americans save for retirement, we know that retirement plan leakage can inhibit an individual's ability to achieve financially secure retirement. Uh, let's see here. The typical 401k holds a uh, participant holds about 10 jobs in a lifetime with 15 million people with the account switching each year. Okay. A 40 year career can easily produce eight or more retirement accounts. Says somebody else. Oh, isn't that weird? Cause we've, we've heard that the average 401k plan is only $42,000. And yet here we are seeing the exact opposite or whatever it is. I've done videos on this before. The average 401k plan is only 42,000 bucks. And I, it's such a freaking stupid argument to make because they're missing out as I've done videos on this, that the, at the a 40 year working career can have eight or more retirement accounts. So Fidelity says our median 401k is 41,000. I'm just using 41,000 on the numbers. Yeah, the median 401k, not the median person, the median account. So if I have five different Fidelity accounts, the median might be 41,000 bucks. But guess what? That means I have accounts that are worth more than that too. It's so freaking stupid, dude. Again, that's what they do. 
The median 401k account balance is already $41,000. Hey, that doesn't include IRAs, doesn't include brokerage accounts, doesn't include cash accounts, and it doesn't include all the individual accounts that you have. It just says the each account, that's it. They say we have a million accounts, we have $10 million in these accounts, so each account has whatever that is, 10,000 bucks, I don't know. What's a million times 10,000? But it's stupid. Because that's not per person, it's per account. It has nothing to do, per person is all that matters. Uh, there's no quick and easy way to roll over an employer-sponsored plan to a new employer. All right. Uh, all major 401k providers. Uh, okay. Under current law, companies can forcibly, but all right, whatever. Tapping the money. The double, double whamming of taxes now, a smaller nest egg, nest egg later, is evident in data from academics, industry, research groups, and investment companies. More than one in three Americans between the age of 25 and 55 uh, or just over 35% fully cash out their 401ks and when they leave an employer for a new job. Okay, just, uh, let's see. Um, uh, most the people most likely to do have a lower balance. So I hear still earners with accounts with at least a hundred thousand also take distributions. Nearly one in ten with at least a hundred thousand cash out their four hundred one k. Okay, well, so basically we're saying one in three between twenty five and fifty five, or just over thirty five percent, fully cash out. I bet because a lot of them have a account balances less than five thousand bucks. Because once you start getting big money, you're not going to cash it out. Stupid. Uh, millennial danger zone. The age group most likely to withdraw uh, their 401k is the millennials. Okay. The danger zone seems to be among participants between the age of 30 and 39. So they don't have a huge amount of money. Fidelity defines millennials as born between 1981 and 1996. All right. So, and this is just real quick. This is the whole point about uh, the thing that pissed me off. Like, we need more access to employer sponsored plans. No, we don't need more access to that. People have access to retirement accounts all the time through a brokerage account. There's no limitations on how much you can contribute. You can contribute literally. You don't need to defer. But those are taxable. You don't get tax deductions. The tax deduction worth that, worth that much now? Not if you're in a 12% tax bracket. I'll tell you that right now. It's not. You shouldn't do that. I mean, if you get free money, by all means, of the 401k. But if you, just, if you can funnel money in a way into a VTI brokerage account, and forego the 12% tax deduction today, that's going to be worth a whole lot more in the future simply because you're not paying any capital gains, minimal dividend interest. And when you die, all that money transfers uh, will, will step up basis anyway to your heirs. And you have access to it in, well before you're 59 and a half or even 55, or you don't need to do a 72T. Uh, it's just the whole thing is stuff. But focus is so much on getting more and more people to have access to qualified and IRA plans, tax deferred accounts. No, 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 no. You should say, no, you should do a brokerage account Put in a VTI, just let that puppy grow. Yeah, you have access to it. Yeah, you might spend it on a new tattoo. Oh, well, it's still flexible. I mean, you'll get hit with a 10% penalty. You're going to have to pay some capital gains potentially. You might even have a tax loss. I don't know. You have a little bit of dividend income. Whoopie flip and do. Hell, a hell of a lot less tax, more tax efficient when you retire. Uh, just more naysaying stuff. I'm sick of it. All right, we'll see you. Love your thoughts.